Coming up on Tech Thing, it's been an ugly week for security online, especially if you work for the Fed. We got a little help. We're also going to take a look at new GPUs, autonomous robotic shark copters, and quite a bit more. It's all coming up on Tech Thing. If you get something useful out of this episode of Tech Thing, please consider contributing to the show at patreon.com slash tech thing. We're brought to you by viewers just like you. Thank you. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Patrick Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we make technology behave. Mm, sometimes. What? Well, you know. <laughs> I, I, we'll explain in a minute. That, by the way, I gotta say, the disgusting drooling noise have been <sighs> echoing around the warehouse. I, you probably haven't heard it where you are, because you're hundreds, if not thousands of miles from here. <laughs> Yeah, the warehouse that Shannon and I work in, it's Shannon, watching mm -hmm. E3 keynotes and trailers, because games. Oh What's your my picks? Gosh. What are your favorite E3 picks so far? Um, all the things. All the things. <laughs> well, there are a few that definitely got my attention. First off, Microsoft is really making people happy. For example, they are finally allowing the Xbox One to have backwards compatibility with Xbox 360 games. Right now, they don't currently have many that are going to be available, but they're supposed to be rolling out in uh, fall of 2015, and then they'll completely roll out lots more games as the time goes on. So I'm really, really, really stoked about that. It means that I can finally sell my old Xbox 360 and I can just stick with the Xbox One. Yay! More room I, on my TV. I don't believe you're actually going to sell your Xbox 360. Well, yeah, it has a lot of stickers on it that I really, really love. Anyway, <laughs> another one is Rare. You might have heard of Rare, the company mm -hmm. that made a whole bunch of video games way back in the day. They're coming back with this thing called Rare Replay. It's going to be 30 bucks, and it's going to have 30 games that they made back in the day around, like, the 2000s. And they're going to allow these games to be playable on the Xbox One. So this includes games like the old Banjo-Kazooie ones, oh, no. the old Perfect Dark games, and one of my favorites, where's it at? Jet Force Gemini. What are these going to be running on? Oh my on? gosh! Xbox One! Oh gosh. Dude! I don't want to buy a console, but I may I'm, have to. I'm slightly excited about that because I'm um, Jet Force You're Gemini. You're vibrating. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Multiplayer Legend of Zelda game is mm -hmm. coming to the 3DS. That one's called Triforce Heroes for 3DS. They also announced that they're going to be bringing on Hyrule Warriors and a new Metroid game for 3DS as well. So I saw a lot of like either remakes at this E3 mm -hmm. or um, like new new games that follow along with the series. Got it. So plenty of those. And there's also going to be a new Star Fox for the Wii U. Star Fox. Yes, yeah, Star Fox. You remember. Barrel yes. Roll. <laughs> <laughs> and possibly my, my very favorite thing, which yeah. I'm completely stoked about, and I'm sure all of you guys are too, Fallout 4. I'm getting that for the PC. I can't wait. This is going to be so fun on my new gaming PC. I'm just like freaking... I'm, uh, there's a dog in the game. I have to finish rebuilding the garage for gaming. Secretly. <laughs> Secret gaming hidden from the children. It's going to be so I'm cool. Fallout Shelter was also announced, and that's going to be that's currently available on I bet I guess iOS, and then they're going to be rolling it out for Android later too. Oh, I really, really, really wish it was available on Android at the moment because I'd be so excited about that. But yeah, Fallout's new games are going to be awesome. There's a new Final Fantasy VII remake that's going to be happening for PS4. I don't have a PS4. I'll gladly buy one just for this game. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a little scared because, like, I was watching the trailer for this and I was like, oh my god, it's a new Final Fantasy VII game remake. Ah, look at Cloud. Oh. But at the same time, I was like, ooh, I hope, I hope they do a good so job with it. I feel the same it. way about Neil Stevenson dropping a new I hope novel they do a good job. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it's so old school. It's such a classic that they better not screw it up. And if they do, I'm going to be very, very upset with them. So but I'm watching. they sold you a PlayStation 4, so. <laughs> ah! Yeah, I'm watching. I would wait until, maybe you should buy it within the return period of the release of the game. That's, that way, yeah, if the game stinks, idea. you can return them both. <laughs> There's international really sign for returning a console with a game that sucked. <laughs> and my last thing that I'm really excited about, I don't know if everybody else is going to be excited about this, but Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which will be on consoles and PC February 23rd, 2016. This was a parkour game about a messenger who's basically really? like fighting the big guys. It's a really, really fun game. It's very fast-paced, and it was parkour, so you got to run around and jump off of buildings and stuff. We live very in Richmond. Fun. You should be doing parkour in real life. Right. We live in a... This is a warehouse. What, in my skirt? Cut. I don't think... I don't think that would work okay. so well. I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> she can't change into pants or athletic gear of any type. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, we do have a question about GPUs that we're going to get to later yeah. in the show, so if you're interested in upgrading your GPU, definitely listen on. I do have some friends who were really excited about Just Cause. Oh. 
Oh yeah. It looks utterly gorgeous. Everything it does looks look utterly amazing. gorgeous. Actually, the graphics are all obscene. Yeah, the graphics are nuts this year. Yes. So I think the biggest things out of E3 were lots of remakes or new additions to series and the graphics for all these games. And um, cross compatibility. Lots of PC games are going to be playable if you own an Xbox as well. So you can move those from PC over to Xbox. Or I could have a superior graphics experience on my desktop PC. You can. Yeah, I thought so. Darren shaking his fist <laughs> in the corner. Derek, by the way, not our Derek, another Derek emails. Hi there, tech thing. Appreciate the show. Been following you guys, gals, for a while through your show history. My question or plea for help is a password manager. I am the pet geek for my family, and I need to remember each individual's ISP logins, router logins, email logins, and any other assorted username password combinations. I am, of course, supposed to know these as <laughs> all of them because no one remembers them. <laughs> Accessible phone app would be ideal. I use a Note 4. Thank you so much, Derek. Woohoo! This is like this is like this is like the one ring to rule them all and yes. in the darkness bind them. Because if it you is. blow this, <laughs> you're ruining it for your entire family. Oh come on. Well no no. Well you we're laughing, but this is this is one thing. Yeah. If you end up managing everyone's passwords and you blow it. You're you're that cousin or that son <laughs> or that you know you're daughter that guy who got everybody hacked. Yeah. So so you both LastPass and one password, for example, they make it really mm -hmm. easy to share passwords the way you want. They do. Well, if if that yeah. person will first off use the same password manager as you, and mm -hmm. then second off share them with you, because they do have to like manually share those mm -hmm. passwords with you in order for you to have access. Both yeah. of us use LastPass in no small part because it makes it super super easy mm -hmm. to share passwords. But I should also mention that one password offers a similar feature called multiple vaults, mm -hmm. which allows you to share like logins and passwords with. Yeah. Say your spouse for your bank account or a coworker for a website login, which right. could be super useful. So you may want to consider the, those two. And then we always get this question every so often, like when we talk about password managers, what if LastPass gets hacked? Hmm. Which brings yeah. us to this. So um, you might want to change your LastPass master password. So on Monday, and we did speak about this on our other show called ThreatWire, uh, LastPass had a security notice come out. And they were like, hey guys, uh, change your best passwords because apparently our authentication hashes have been hacked along with email addresses, password reminders, server persults, and authentication hashes. So that basically means that the, uh, the hash that your password is stored as, so like the jim jumble of data. I was gonna say, what the hash? Yeah, so your authentication <laughs> hash is um, the jumble of data that your password turns into right. after they mix it up with a bunch of garbledy gook. That would be the salt. Yes, the salt. <laughs> so they do it so many times, and they I actually wanna quote this because they explain it pretty well. Uh, they say, was my master password exposed? No, LastPass has never had access to your master password. We use encryption and hashing algorithms of the highest standard to protect user data. We hash both the username and master password on the user's computer with yeah. 5,000 rounds of PBKDF2 SHA-256, which is a password strengthening algorithm that right. creates a key on which we perform another round of hashing to generate the master password authentication hash, so that's the authentication yeah. hash. This is sent to the LastPass server so that we can perform an authentication check as the user is logging in. <laughs> so that's how they make sure that you are who you say you are. We then take that value, use a salt, a random string per user, and do another 100,000 rounds of hashing and compare that to what is in our database in layman's terms. Cracking our algorithm is super, super hard, even for the strongest of computers. Or so Loosely translated, if you've pissed off the NSA bad enough, they can probably <laughs> get through this. Yeah, so you, so but, moral of the story is change your master password. Yeah, and also make sure that you don't share passwords with some of your less sophisticated family yes. members where they can get into your stuff because if, hi, this is Dale Parmo from uh, Microsoft. I wanted to talk to you about the little problem we've had with your machine. You know, and then that person's like, oh, Microsoft called me about a problem with my machine and I downloaded this software from this website called Evil's Nasty Stuff that's gonna wipe my machine out.com and it's really cool. It sounds ridiculous, yeah. but the thing about social engineering is it works. And FYI, Entirely too well. you know, I don't know about you personally, but I'm not going to switch to LastPass because of this. I just use... Switch from LastPass. Switch from LastPass, <laughs> right. I already use multi-factor authentication on my LastPass right. account. I also use a really, really, really weird <laughs> master password, which I changed to another even more weirder password. So I don't feel like I'm going to get hacked in this. But I also changed my password reminder, too. 
and it's super, super vague, so nobody can fi really figure out what the heck I'm talking about, super, except for me. Super, super vague. <laughs> so, yeah, mm. just, you know, don't freak out too much about this. It, LastPass is still a valid option if you consider it. Well, I'll put it this way. LastPass, I haven't moved away from LastPass. And for those people who are like, well, I what if I maintain my own system? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. If you want to encrypt your text file on your machine, you know, that is awesome. That is your responsibility. I like the idea that some pretty hardcore and very open professionals yes. are keeping an eye on the things at uh, LastPass. Because so many times we've seen people not be so open yeah. about the hacking on their system. <coughs> OPM. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got some friends that are really upset about that uh, who work for the federal government. <laughs> Let's talk to Darren. Yes. Building a server for $600, or what I like to call building a virtualization server node with the next unit of computing. Oh yes, that's right. We're getting into some fun hardware on Hack5. Check it out on the sister show, hak5.org. This week's rapid fire roundup is three ways to protect your privacy online. We are always running risk of getting some sort of info about a stolen online. So here's a few easy recommendations to keep yourself stress-free, including a special one from everyone who's just been savaged by the break-ins at the Office of Personal Management. Ooh. Not that I'm harping on that today. Ooh. It's just painful and <laughs> unnecessary. Shannon. I'm ready, let's go. <laughs> so number one, always use two-factor authentication. Yeah. And I'm doing this on my single because it's so important. Use that two-factor authentication when it's available and use a different password on every single freaking site that you ever could. Two-factor authentication will give you that extra layer of security if a password is hacked on a site. And also, if a password is hacked, if you use a different one on each site, an attacker can't reuse said password on all your sites. Password managers are a really, really handy way to save all your passwords so you don't have to remember them. But make sure whatever master password you use is secure for that password manager. Number two, don't save forms in your browser or on different sites, especially credit card details. Anyone who has access to your computer could open a browser and fill in said forms if you saved your address, your credit card information, your name, etc. on them. So if your laptop got stolen, somebody opens up the browser, they could see where you live if you have your address filled in for a shipping website or something like that. But Shannon, my system is secure. No one will ever get in. <laughs> Watch Hack 5. It doesn't <laughs> save time, but it does save you from running into problems if your laptop yeah. is stolen. Uh, same thing goes with sites. If pre-filled forums are in your accounts and those accounts are hacked on a website, somebody could gain access and right. use your account to buy all sorts of things from like Best Buy and exchange money from PayPal or whatever, etc., etc. So very, very very important. And number three, a credit or security freeze. Patrick, I'm going to let you take this one. Okay, this is the big gun, right? Um, this one's for everybody who's been hit by the OPM data thefts, the 80 million identities leaked by Anthem, or maybe it was only 40 million. And hey, everybody that's worried about identity theft and credit fraud, which pretty much should be all of us at this point, instead of giving you a warning after your ID has been stolen, which is what most credit monitoring services do, weird activity, you should check this out. <laughs> um, a, a credit freeze essentially locks down your file at the major credit bureaus, all four of them. Nobody can access it until you unfreeze it. It's a step beyond a fraud alert, which requires lenders to contact you. Shannon, can I offer you a credit card? Well, I don't know. Let me unfreeze my credit account. Well, it's, it was, but the fraud alert, right, they have to contact you. And, mm -hmm. and if you say yes, then the credit company will release it. In the case of, of a credit freeze, nobody gets it until you unfreeze it. Then you have to refreeze Yay. it. Um, the other thing is about a, the fraud alert has to be renewed every 90 days. So a credit freeze stays in place forever, makes it super hard to get credit mm. in your name unless you unfreeze it. Uh, it's a pretty manual process. There's a great uh, FAQ up at the, the consumer, well, consumer.ftc.com, uh, the Federal Trade Commission, you might know them as. Um, oh, yeah, what the is credit, credit freeze credit? facts. Yeah. These are really good. Yeah, it's really, really good. Also, I really, 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 really want to recommend an article by Krebs on security, which whose website I've been living on this week, uh, How I Learned to Stop <laughs> Worrying and Embrace the Security Freeze. Um, you know, I, Threatwire has gotten me way back into this man's uh, blog in a big way. Uh, and he's written some really smart things, uh, yeah. especially also about the OPM break-ins and sort of the bigger picture, which isn't like China's breaking in, but <gasps> they weren't following basic security. Oh. This is a problem, people. <laughs> in any <Seriously>? case. <laughs> yeah. And, and, in which case, use passwords. Don't mm -hmm. use the same password everywhere. By the way, all that stuff you're putting in your house, your Nest, your cameras, baby monitors, make sure there's a really good password yeah. on all of it. Because Shut any in. of that can turn into a way to get into your network or just for somebody creepy with a Wi-Fi receiver to sit outside your house and watch your baby sleep. 
What? You don't do that. Darren doesn't do that, but he does other things. <laughs> Darren's like, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, do us a favor. We got links uh, to all of these, are, well, both the articles I mentioned in the show notes, yes. techthing.com or down below the fold on YouTube. And listen, I know that we keep preaching this stuff like, you know, that like the choir, yeah. but it's really, really important. And it'll keep you from dealing like with a ton of stress yeah. down the line. So yeah, follow these protocols and it'll keep you safe. I or feel like getting a copy safe. of my credit report today just to check. I just checked mine. I'm doing awesome. That part, of, I'm, I just want to make sure nobody's opened up a credit card in my name. Yeah, that too. Email askatechthing.com. <laughs> we want to hear what you have to say on this. Or hey, if you're like enough with the security already, back off. We understand. We probably won't, but we'll listen. You can email us. Please. It's time for our host gator disruptive tech of the week. And as much as I want to suggest that security and pen testing has a lot of room for growth right about now, let's talk about how the street finds its own uses for things like lifeguards using uh, quadcopters to monitor uh, great whites near the beach. This is what? crazy. Infinitely wild at gizmodo.com. Um, California lifeguards get drone instantly spot 10 to 12 great whites. That was posted on infinitelywild.gizmodo.com yesterday. Uh, white sharks, uh, the, the ones that the lifeguards saw, were modestly sized. And according to Seal Beach's chief lifeguard, Joe Bailey, quote, uh, we have sharks that are five to six feet long, not aggressive, acting like normal sharks, feeding on bottom fish, doing exactly what we would expect them to do. And it's kind of crazy <laughs> because, nope. well, nope. But but, but see, nope. they're, they're they're there, <laughs> Shannon. They're, I know they're there, but they're, I don't want to know that they're there. I'm just. <laughs> I like that I'll the, life, the beach. I like that the lifeguards know that they're there, and I like that they're they're not particularly worried about them because these are the people nope. who live in the water. I bring this up though, not because sharks are awesome, um, because but it's they are. really fun to tease early adopters, like say Hack Five Darren over in the corner, who has literally nine plus quads in his workshops, about forty feet behind me, not counting a couple of DJI Phantoms and a couple three, four, sub forty dollar drones off Amazon.com. Yeah. But I've got friends that are making a living using massive Octa drones to carry DL DSLRs. You oh, think I could yeah. say that after? Like, like 10 years, and other high-end HD and 4K cameras. Uh, people are using them for war driving or, well, flying, pen testing. Gotta love a flying pineapple. Hack5, uh, <laughs> hackshop.com or hack5.org to figure out what I'm talking about if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and seriously, while I don't think drones are gonna change humanity, like people said the internet will change humanity, uh, and they might ruin freedom when they're, say, the size of gnats and require you to run your own personal EMP to evade them. They are a technology right now that is offering a new way for people to do things that they already do and make it better or easier or faster. Although I will say there's, you know, possibly a better way to track sharks. I still think one of the coolest things I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, liquid robotics wave gliders. These are autonomous robots that use waves to power movement. Uh, Stanford's Hopkins Marine Station and the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute were using them to track white sharks. These are really slick. Whoa. And they've made it from San Francisco to Hawaii without the need to, say, change batteries every 10 minutes. Matter of fact, okay, that's cool. They, yeah, they've run s autonomously for over a year. Wow. That's like 52,000 battery changes on a typical drone <laughs> in 400 days. Give okay, or take. yeah, that's that's really cool. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I want to build a business around drones. Wouldn't that be cool? And if you do, <laughs> whether it's a business around drones or just need a site to show off your cool drone videos, do us a favor, host it on our sponsor, HostGator.com. If you use the coupon code TechThing, you get 30% off your new hosting package. It's a great deal for you, and you'll help support. The show. Oh, I'm so excited. The hey. wave glider is so cool. Uh, the wave glider is awesome. You know what else is awesome? F new GPUs? <laughs> yes. <laughs> As I start frothing at the mouth. <laughs> Kevin from St. George, Utah. He's awesome ask too. Ask at .com. He is awesome. Hi, Patrick and Shannon, my favorite tech heroes. Aw. I recently upgraded from the 550 Ti to the 970. I currently Whoa. have the means to acquire a 980 Ti without breaking my budget, but I also had the option to buy another 970 from a coworker for a great price. He upgraded to the 980 Ti. My question is if it would be wise to save the money and get that second 970 for SLI instead and put the saved money back in the bank for the future, or is the 980 Ti that much better? From Kevin in St. George, Utah. Hmm. Okay, first of all, uh, wow. From a 550 to a 970 is a huge, huge, huge upgrade, huge. <laughs> which also makes me wonder how far behind the 970 your, your CPU is, because oh you don't want to be CPU bound. More importantly though, are you running a 60 hertz 1080p monitor? If you are, stick with the 970, do not bother to upgrade. Uh, if you have a 144 hertz panel, or you're running like 2560 by 20, 2560 by 1440, um, the dual 970 actually sounds really nice, or the single 980 Ti. The single 980 Ti would sound better if you didn't already have a 970. Mm -hmm. Two 970s and SLI, very comparable to a 980 Ti or a Titan. 
X. Uh, and okay. if you have a 4K monitor, a pair of 980s is still pretty much entry level if you want to be able to game in any uh, meaningful way. PC Gamer um, has a great set of benchmarks where they actually look at the 980 Ti uh, versus uh, GTX 970 and SLI. And you'll notice, nice. like, here's the Ti. This is Hitman Absolution, uh, Shadow of Mordor. It's amazing how similar these are because these are the 1080p mm -hmm. numbers and these are the 4K numbers. Um, there's a lot, oh, you know, in this benchmark, and it's like everything else, like, oh, this one's faster in this benchmark, and this one's fat, well, this one's slower in this benchmark too, and this one's slower in this benchmark, but you get what I'm saying here. Um, if you have 1080p, don't bother to, you know, buy a second card, because yeah. you don't need it, unless you're running like a 144 hertz monitor. If you want to watch a great video, um, uh, Jay's Two Cents, his channel on YouTube, has a great 970 SLI benchmark versus the 980 Ti and Titan X, uh, or 10 if you prefer. And I hope that helps. It's, uh, it's amazing. If you have 1080p at 60 hertz, just stop with the 970. <laughs> if you have a bigger monitor or a considerably faster monitor, mm -hmm. I would go with the two 970s. If you're buying a single card now, I'd probably... Probably if and only if I had the right. larger resolution monitor, high resolution monitor, I'd probably look at the 980 Ti. Although a single 980 now, then another 980 to go to 4K. So many <laughs> options. I will stop. He could keep now. going. Although, let me know what you choose. Uh, email us back, ask at techthing.com, because I'm curious. She is. <laughs> Thank you all so much for the questions, the tips, and the posts on our social sites. It's not our show our show. It's our show. We want to make it even more so. Got to drop a special thanks to everyone that donates to patreon.com slash tech thing. Those help pay the bills to keep the show coming to you and to keep us fed and clothed and insurance and stuff. I feel a little crazy today and we're really, really close. So if we can bump our Patreon up to $2,500 per episode, we'll do a special Patreon only video build for our patrons every month. Could be Raspberry Pi, could be a gaming PC, could be DIY home surgery on Darren's knee, which I don't know why I'm pointing to Darren because we don't have a cam camera on him, but <laughs> Darren's, we're gonna modify Darren's knee. Darren's going cyborg. I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? Yeah, because I'm a Cylon, so it's, it's okay. That explains a lot. Hey, <laughs> if you can't donate, no worries. We still love you. And reviewing the show on iTunes or giving us a thumbs up on YouTube doesn't cost a thing and helps us out. Thank all of you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you. Greg Roden to AskAtechThing.com. What is the best game controller for a Windows 7, soon to be Windows 10 PC? I heard that the original USB Xbox controller was the best at one time. What do you recommend as a good game controller? Thanks, Greg. Woohoo! Yes. we're in a gaming frenzy today. Well, sometimes, you know, you need a controller for your PC instead of a keyboard and a mouse. It's a very, very valid question. And my two favorites, I have two because that's kind of weird. DualShock 4 wireless controller for the PS4, and that one currently runs around 50 bucks, mm -hmm. depending on which color it's you nice choose controller. to purchase. Yeah, it's, it's totally nice. And then the other one that I like is the Microsoft Xbox 360 wireless controller too. Uh, both of them are really, really durable. They're wireless, which is great. Mm -hmm. So you just plug it into USB. Yeah, you're good to go. And they work with uh, Windows machines. And they're also really comfortable because these are from the brand names. They're from Microsoft and from PlayStation, so you, or Sony, so you know that that they're going to be built just like the ones that you get on the console, and your choice of the two really depends on which one you best prefer as far as comfort and style go. I prefer the style of the Xbox controller because I've been using the Xbox controller for a lot longer than the PlayStation one, so that's my favorite for uh, PC games. But I should also mention that Xbox is just coming out with a new one. So this is the $150 <laughs> Elite Xbox One controller. So this will also be use, usable on the P PC eventually, uh, once it does come out. Interestingly enough, you can change out the keys on this, which might be uh, kind of fun. I was about fun. to ask what the Elite part was. Yeah, you, you can, can change the throw weight. You of can it? customize it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if I don't believe that it'll allow you to do mapping like you would for like mm -hmm. RTS games. So that might be a problem for some people, but. Yeah, it looks really cool. It looks like just as comfortable as the other Xbox ones. So definitely might want to consider that if you feel like spending 150 bucks for one. Hmm. And if you're curious about the Oculus Rift controllers and what's coming up with that, we're going to oh, try to yeah. get a friend of mine has had hands-on time with both. And we're going to see if we can get them Yay! on to talk about it. So. Crazy controllers going so for Verge. Verge. <laughs>
Vinny did not email about Virch. Vinny emailed askatechthing.com with an OS tip for Carl. I would give Peppermint OS 5 32 bits a try on that old netbook. It's based off the LTS Ubuntu 14.04 using the LXDE desktop environment and is lightning fast even on an Atom CPU. PeppermintOS.com is the website. He says you'll feel very right at home, very close to an XP feel. Super light on the system resources. It will idle at about 120 gigabytes of RAM. It also uses the Mint Software Center, so adding and removing software is made very easy for Linux newbies. It also has a neat program called ICE, which lets you turn web-based applications like MS Office Live into a desktop app. This helps keep your system very light. It's great for older PCs with small hard drives. Yay! Thank you, Vinny. Yes, thank you so much. And James emails, do you know what the minimum bit rate is for Blu-ray video discs? I am interested in putting several 480p videos on a Blu-ray disc rather than using DVD since Blu-ray can use a more efficient codec, H.264 versus MPEG-2. And it has a much larger capacity, 24, 23 or 46 gigs versus 4 or 8 gigs. 1500 kilobytes per second seems to be good for a 480p resolution, but is it too low? Would it cause any compatibility or playback issues, or am I just worrying about it for no reason? Hmm. What do you think, Pat? So I've never actually seen a minimum bitrate for Blu-rays. If <laughs> if you go over to like you know the Wikipedia entry on either. Well, it's kind of funny. Wikipedia.org, the Blu-ray entry. Um, you know, there's a maximum of mm -hmm. 54 megabits per second, uh, or a maximum combined AV bit rate of 48 megabits per second for both audio and video data, okay. and a maximum video bit rate of 40 megabits per second. Hmm. Um, if you start kicking around on the, the, the Blu-ray, Blu-ray.com website, you know, you get like nine hours of HD video on a 50 gigabyte disc, wow. or 23 hours of SD video on a 50 gigabyte disc. So I went to a bandwidth calculator, and it's kind of crazy. So. 5.2 megabits per second for standard def is roughly 23 hours uh, of SD on a 50 gig disk. So a 23 gigabyte Blu-ray, which you were talking about in your email, should pack 10 hours of video easily. Just render the files on a super high quality setting on Handbrake. Just, just go straight. You don't render on like 20. Render on like two. Go placebo. <laughs> just, just go for the ridiculous man with burn them to a disk and see if it plays back. Because um, hmm. if you've got 23 gigs and you're only going to put like 40 minutes of video on it or four hours of video yeah. on it, use all the bandwidth. <laughs> Make it easy on Handbrake or whatever encoding tool you use. But and as far as I know, there is no minimum. And you could also, you know, you can use MPEG-4, you can use MPEG-2. I would use MPEG-4 um, just because it's more awesome. It's more awesome. It's more awesome. How's that for a technical answer? <laughs> you know what else is more awesome? Some days, once in a while, yep. every so often. Oh, yes? Put down the phone. That's right. Step away from the That's screen. That's right. Close the laptop and do something analog. Like? Ride a bike. Or, <laughs> I have another one for you today. Did we do a ride a bike last week? Yeah, we did. Oh, I forgot to change that. Sorry. Or, <laughs> you could go see a play. Oh, you want to see a play? Uh, well, I'm a thespian. I haven't seen a play in a long time, but there's a local theater here. There's a here. theater troupe. Mm -hmm. There nearby. is. Yeah. So I'm kind of considering going over there and seeing when they have rehearsals and things like that and tryouts. Maybe I should try out for a play because it's been a long time. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Beth, I want to see you stabbing people and wreaking havoc on Shakespearean <laughs> times, but I'm a romantic. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Shannon Moore. We'll see you next week on Tech Thing. That should totally be a unique thing. Tripod. <laughs> tripod. This is Tripod. No. It's a bicycle reference. Tripod. Mm, <laughs> tricorder says you're definitely not pregnant. <laughs> no, you got to aim it down here. No, it's be a like... tricorder. You just aim it in the general direction. Oh, Darren's <laughs> knee's messed up. <laughs> you two are from South Africa, aren't you? South Africa. The tricorder. We have guests today. <laughs> We're recording right now. I won't call you guys out by the way, I promise. You could be on the run. Look at all the people. Just very publicly. All these people, look at them all. I just realized this is a Dymo label maker. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you remember? Did you ever do the ones where you're like, just click, <laughs> click, click, click? You could be. I can't do that. We can't do that in the bloopers because then the emails will start and you'll beat me to death with a hammer. Everybody's going to be like, are you pregnant? <laughs> no. 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 Oh wait, my uh, No! No! <laughs> no! It's a little hot in here and we're a little loopy. <laughs> oh my goodness. But we want to thank each and every contributor.
contributor. All these wild and crazy kids. All these beautiful people. <laughs> wild and crazy. Are you crushing kids. our head? That's it. There's got to be a Look stick around here. All <gasps> these crazy There's scissors people. down. All the people. There's like 40 feet of Velcro down here. Them all. all these wild and crazy This is unlicensed Velcro. Patriots. 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 Patriots.